Hi, I'm Ethan. I love muzzleloading. Today we're taking a look at this beautiful original Watley flintlock fouling piece. The flat beveled lock plate is signed Watley at the center and has a frizzen roller border and scroll engraving with a goose neck cock. The smooth bore multi-stage barrel has a silver blade front sight with a teardrop base, a crown P and crown V proof marks flanking the HH maker's mark with light engraving at the breech. The standing breech has a dished rear sight. The furniture is brass and includes some light engraving, nicely shaped finials, pierced armorial designs on the wrist extension, pierced hunting theme with dogs game and a hunter on the side plate. And there is raised relief carving around the upper tang and a brass inventory tag on the butt marked 562. It's important to note with this piece that we have we have a note here about this piece that the stock is a period refinished stock with some thin cracks. The barrel measures as a 10 gauge and the barrel is 39 inches long. Although this piece is a well used or well loved example of a flintlock fouling piece, I wanted to show it to you today as a working functional piece of art here. Uh, all the way through this piece from its weight to how it holds is just beautiful. There are areas like at the rear of our lock plate mortise here where we do have some fractures. We do have some wood that is split out. We do have some minor cracks through this piece, but I still think it holds up really as a fine example of what a hunting arm would have been during the flintlock era. Starting at our butt plate here, we have a beautiful brass butt plate with shaped finials here on the crest or the tang of our butt plate and beautifully executed engraving. The brass is aged and it has gone through life here, but it's still the engraving is crisp and sharp. Across the top here, we have a beautiful border and beautiful scrolls and leaves emanating or passing through the rear of our butt plate. The butt plate itself is held on with a pin here at the top, and then we have two screws in the rear end of the butt plate. Like many fouling pieces from this era, we have a round toe, and we have a beautifully cut mortise here running along the butt stock. Our crest ends in a nice, elegant point that dissipates into the wrist just before this beautifully engraved brass wrist extension. Wrist extension is a little abstract compared to others that we see, but we, we can see a little bit of a couple flags here on either side, some leaves and some flowers. It gives me the feel that this could have been a, a shield and helmet design at one time, but has since been modified through the eras here. Still, the engraving is crisp and sharp. We have some scrolls and leaves throughout this wrist extension. Really, the, there's an attention to detail here in this kind of wrist extension that many times we don't even see on entire muzzle loaders. Forward of that, we have again, a beautifully engraved lock here. The lock plate itself is flat, but we do have beveled edges and engraved borders throughout. Looking at the engraving on the butt plate and the wrist accession, it's fine, but it doesn't compare to the fine engraving here at the tail of our lock plate. It's beautifully executed and is still crisp to this day. It shows some signs of wear and corrosion as all of the hardware on this piece does, but I don't think it detracts from the overall piece. As far as locks go, I think this is a very beautiful lock proportionally, artistically, everything about it. This comes off very nice. We have, as stated here, a gooseneck cock. We have engraving on our top jaw and throughout the cock itself with some nice borders. The cock bolt itself is engraved. They're kind of flower motif, very common in uh, many English arms of the period. As stated earlier, we have Watley engraved into the side of the lock plate and we have a roller on our frizzen to make a more elegant function in this lock. The pan itself is large and oval in shape, very <laughs> very far back full cock position on this lock. Even the rear of our frizzen here features some elegant, simple, but elegant engraving across the back. Back from the lock, we have the tang and tang carving area. We have some beautiful relief carving here at the rear. It 
has been worn though. We can tell here on our left hand side, there's just nothing left of what we can imagine would be a scroll on that side worn out in time. On the lock side, we do have a split out section, as mentioned before, behind our lock plate, but everything still functions as it should. The tang area features some worn engraving, similar in execution to what we see on our lock and our other engraved pieces. Flipping to our trigger guard here, we have very common for fouling pieces in the flintlock era. We have a brass trigger guard extends back here about halfway to our toe and it is held in with what I believe to be three pins. We have one here at the tail, one about halfway up that tail, and then one forward of our trigger guard bow here. The trigger guard features some simple leaf pattern engraving here at the end, and then it has some simple lined borders. In the center of our bow, we have a nicked border as well as what looks like a kind of shell engraved motif here. And then we have that same border repeated up here at the front of our trigger guard in front of our bow. And then we have an ornamental motif at the front. Again, fairly common for fouling pieces in the period. This wasn't necessarily your common man's hunting arm for the time. This was the kind of quality when new had, would have been reserved for somebody of some status to be able to afford this kind of arm. An interesting thing about this piece here is we have an octagonal barrel at the start for about eight inches. That cuts in half. We have 16 sides here. That runs to a wedding band. We have a round barrel, more wedding bands, and then our barrel finally tapers out to its final 10 gauge diameter. Like many later flintlock fouling pieces, we do have barrel keys here holding our barrel to the stock. Our ramrods are made of brass. We have an ornate entry pipe here. Again, like we see in many flintlock era arms in originals, the brass for these ramrod pipes is extremely thin. Our front pipe actually shows some wear where the end or back of the pipe has been worn either through use in the field or simply the number of times a ramrod has run through it has eroded or sanded it quite literally away. To make a note of it, our barrel keys are running from the side plate side through to the lock plate side. We have a total of three barrel keys through this piece. For me, really, apart from the, the beauty of the lock and the engraving on the butt plate, this game scene side plate really makes this piece. And it, it makes me wonder what this looked like new because of how elegant this is. The piece itself has signs of wear. There are a couple small dings in the barrel. Nothing more than you would find on a well-used and uh, well-appreciated hunting arm, even today. But when we look at this side plate, it's just gorgeous. At the rear, we have a sleeping hound or dog. We have an angel or winged figure next to that dog. Then <laughs> forward of the angel here, we have a hunter who looks like he's reclined in a comfortable position. And it looks like his hunting arm is, on, is laying next to him, kind of on his right hand side, which is really neat. We have some kind of winged figure or a bird next to a display of fine hairs. And then forward of those hairs, we have a dog sitting and then a dog sleeping as well. Forward and underneath of this entire scene, we have some beautiful leaf and scroll patterns kind of enveloping each of our lock bolts, both forward and in the center. This scene, although simple, reminds me of something that we all look forward to or hope to experience when we're out hunting with our muzzleloaders. You can see some confidence in the hunter. He's relaxing after a day of chasing game. Even the dogs themselves are having a rest and just enjoying the experience they've gone through. Rear of the side plate, our butt stock is simple and clean. We have no cheek rest, no adornment, no carving. It's just simple. Like many fouling pieces that we see through time here, we have a base level of what the fouling piece is. It does what it's supposed to do. And then on top of that, we have these artistic elements, these carvings and these extensions to add in value and importance 
to both the piece and, and possibly the hunter themselves using it. I hope that you've enjoyed this short tour of this Watley flintlock fowling piece. I'd like to thank the Rock Island Auction Company for giving me the opportunity to share this piece here today with you. If you'd like to learn more about this and many other antique arms, I encourage you to visit the Rock Island Auction Company YouTube channel to learn more. Once again, I'm Ethan. I love muzzleloading. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you next time.